In the first video of this series, we demonstrated four scenarios of magnetic induction with the Faraday disk generator. The first we tried was rotating the disk alone. Then in the second, we rotated the magnet alone. In the third scenario, we rotated the magnet and the disk together. And in the fourth, we rotated the stator alone. The results have led to some controversy since they can be explained by either the magnetic field rotating with the magnet, or the magnetic field remaining stationary when the magnet rotates. So which explanation is right? The problem with the generator as currently designed is that for the eight possible tests that we can perform, the outcomes will be identical if the magnetic field rotates or not. So we can't solve the dilemma using closed circuits. One of the first open circuit approaches was performed by Dr. E. H. Kennard during World War I. Kennard had had a long-standing dispute with Samuel Barnett, the discoverer of the Barnett effect, regarding the correct explanation of the Faraday generator. Carnard's paper, published in the Philosophical Magazine in 1917, eliminated the rotating disk and replaced it instead with a rotating capacitor. His apparatus was designed as follows. It consisted of an inner cylinder shown in blue and an outer cylinder shown in beige, which form the two plates of the capacitor. These have wires that then lead out of the field to an electrometer. A multi-turn coil is wound around the capacitor as shown by the copper-colored solenoid, and this coil is energized to create the magnetic field that passes through the capacitor shown by the green loops. The entire apparatus is then rotated together, and the brushes are used to commutate the charge from the generator back to a stationary electrometer. This test apparatus can be understood as a Faraday disk generator where there is no disk current generated, but rather only the rotating stator leads and capacitor plates experience a Lorentz force when rotated in the magnetic field. The Lorentz force polarizes the capacitor by driving a tiny current on the stator leads, which can't be cancelled by a small current where the disk used to be. This polarization is then measured by a sensitive electrometer. Kennard found that the device generated a polarization of the capacitor even when the capacitor, stator, and magnet rotated together as a unit and the electrometer was at a remote distance. This result appeared to confirm the theory of Lorenz, Maxwell, and Faraday and disprove the theory of Einstein. Kennard said in his final summary, An experiment is described showing that a cylindrical condenser rotating inside a magnetized coaxial solenoid becomes charged as required by the theory of Lorentz. Rotation of the solenoid has no effect. The disproof of the moving line theory is thus completed. Electromagnetic induction depends in part upon absolute rotation in the mechanical sense. This experiment remained largely ignored by the scientific community until it resurfaced again in 1987, this time in the form of a navigational instrument developed by the Department of Defense contractor the Charles Stark Draper Laboratory. The Keene patent took Kennard's generator to the next logical level, detecting rotation with respect to absolute space for the purpose of inertial navigation. This is because the Kennard device resembles in principle the fiber optic gyroscope, whereas the fiber optic gyroscope detects absolute rotation by measuring differences in the arrival time of counterpropagating beams of light, the Keen version detects absolute rotation electromagnetically. The Keen patent provides many more details on the best ways to make the device, including electronic circuitry and even examples of the solenoid construction parameters that work the best. The patent also provided test data to back up their claims. Finally, the Keen patent describes the device as working both with a power supply rotating with the gyroscope or an external power supply, whichever is more convenient. No argument can be made that induction occurs because the power supply lines are cut by a hypothetical rotating magnetic field. After becoming aware of the Keen patent in 2015, I attempted a scientific replication of their work, in particular the device that was cited in Figure 3A of his patent. The device is shown rotating on a turntable in this video. My purpose was to measure the polarization of the capacitor using a battery power supply and data logger that rotated with the device. I also used Keen's method of pulsing the magnetic field so that it would be possible to compare the effect of rotation, the effect of the magnetic field direction, and to contrast with suitable controls, such as pulsing the magnetic field when the rotor was stationary. The data was transmitted by Bluetooth to a computer and then plotted and compared to the original data in the Keen patent. 
Although my work is still ongoing, the results to date have been consistent with that reported by Keane and Kennard. So the evidence would seem to suggest that. But on a more positive note, the results imply some new and amazing things, namely, magnetic induction does not necessarily need counter movement of a magnet in the conductor. Two, a capacitor may become spontaneously polarized by a magnetic field simply by the rotation of the Earth. And three, an appropriately designed unipolar generator can detect rotation with respect to the fixed stars just like the fiber optic gyroscope or the Foucault pendulum.